Hey guys, welcome to Downtown Tailoring. You know, sometimes I have a bride and she said, oh, I have a wedding gown with beads and lace and I need to take it in short and add the sleeve. And I said, okay, yeah, no problem. And then she said, and I have a t-shirt. Can you shorten it? And I'm like, of course. So I guess that shortened t-shirts might be a little bit difficult. So in today's video, we are going to shorten t-shirts. So let's go. This is a t-shirt I have. I'm gonna do a big job, but today I'm gonna show you just the hem. This is what we are talking about in this video. And keep in mind that when you wanna shorten anything, if you want your hem to be straight and nice, the best thing to do is folding them by the centers, center back and center front. As well, when I tried on the customer, I pinned the front and I pinned the back because sometimes even if you wanna try to make it straight, it doesn't work, you have to pin both. So this will be my points of reference and then I'm going with a straight line from the front going to the first point and then I will do the same from the back towards the side. And then I will join my two lines and then I will soften up what will be the points that get marks. So this is what I have have now is a line that it will look pretty much straight in my customer. And then I will gonna mark seven eighth of the inches for seam allowance. I wanna do the hem at three quarter and with the knit always I leave one eighth extra because sometimes when you pull it, if you pull it, it gets a little smaller. So just to be safe. And after that, remember that I marked the hem just in one side. Now I need to transfer that mark to the other side so I will be complete. For this hem, I fill up my bobbin because I'm gonna use two thread. And this is because I'm gonna use this twin needle. And as you can see the package, it has the same t-shirt. So now you know that it's perfect for that kind of job. This is one quarter inch separation between the needles and is the point is for a stretchy material too. So this will be perfect for that kind of job. And when you wanna put it in your machine, you just do exactly the same as if we're a single needle. But something that I would like to do always is to see if they fit well in the foot and of course in the little half of my machine. That's a little bit paranoid, but <laughs> sometimes you have in zigzag or things like that and those things are very important. I'm just securing this thread here and I will take both of them together and I will thread my machine the same way that I would thread any machine, just with the two thread together. And then when I go to the bottom, I will cut my two thread just to make it easier to thread it. I'll separate and then I will use one in one needle and the other in the other needle. For the bobbin, I will make sure to loosen up a little bit of the tension so it doesn't pull the upper material. Check how much you move the screw because you wanna put it back in the same place. If you want a great job, it's a good idea as well to use a very thin knit interfacing. This one that I'm showing you is great. It doesn't add weight, but in my case, I won't do it today because you don't strictly need it. And I want to recreate the most common condition that you will have at home. And I'm going to iron the hem folded. This step, not everybody do it, but I feel more confident when I do it. And here you go. This is the t-shirt. This is how it look, a little crop. And now I'm going to my sewing machine. So remember that I cut it to sew a three quarter inch. And what I'm gonna do first is to measure if it's true that the three quarter inch in my machine will be okay. And I see that yes, it will be perfectly okay. So I will do my seams inside the hem so everything will be perfect. And now I know that I can proceed and sew. Something else that I could have done is to search that before so the finished look is a little bit more professional, but because not all of us has the serger, the finish still that is there, it will be good enough. I don't have enough words to express how fantastic these needles feel. They are amazing for this kind of job. After I go all around, 
I will cut my thread and I will be very careful and try to sew the last stitch in the same place where I started. And then I will go back and forth, you know, and my job is finished. I will cut the thread and look at that. It looks amazing. It looks good inside and out. And if that bothers you, the excess of seam allowance that I left, you can do two. You either cut your three quarter or you can use a scissor like this and cut the excess of material. I say you can use any scissor, but this one will help you to avoid to cut or damage the material underneath. But of course, you can use any scissor, but <laughs> sometimes you get uh, some accidents that you don't want. And this is my material is super stretchy, it's fantastic. So let's go to the second one. And in this case, my customer liked the length, but she doesn't like the rounded shape of this. So we are going to make it basically straight. And as I did before, remember, you fold it in your centers and then you are going to mark it. As you can see, the side goes with the line and I am making sure to make my hem above the white line. That because your hem will look better. In the sides, I will go a little bit up, like a half an inch. I know it's a contradiction in terms, but because my customer wants a hem that looks straight, when you do a little bit higher in the sides, then it kind of take three-dimensional shape and it looks straight. So by not doing it straight, you will get it straight. I know. I'm going to make sure as well to square my hems at the center front and at the back to avoid points. So I have to open the hem and I was hoping to keep the thread, but this kind of thread, I cannot reuse it. And after that, of course, I'm going to cut it. And then as I did before, I am marking the other part of the thread and then I'm going to go to my serger machine and I'm going to search all the hem. This is a very, very, very easy way to do a hem in a t-shirt. Now I'm going to back to my sewing machine and I will just fold and I will use a longer stitch and I will sew with the machine guiding me the three quarter. And you see, it looks really good. Please notice that I'm using the tape trick because this is what will help me to do nice stitches that will look really good. And now that is done, I'm going to my ironing board and I iron and the hem is done. You see, it looks really good, but you wanted it to look like the original, right? This is what we are doing today. So you can do yourself the second stitch. I like to do my second stitch on the top and not on the bottom part because I can control better my machine. So for that, you have to make sure that the bobbin thread is the same as the top. And then I'm going very slow because I wanted it to look, you know, parallel, right? And this is the result and look, you can see that it looks really pretty much straight on the mannequin even though it has line and the line will change your vision. But still, if you take that trick in consideration when we shorten a shirt, you will see the difference. It will look much better. This is my birthday gift and I haven't been able to open it since my birthday. So I didn't do it because I promised myself that I will do it with you guys. I wanted to share that experience for you but if there is a rock in here i'm all screwed because how can i say oh look i haven't even opened it because i wanted to share that with my youtube subscribers i will just do a sneak peek because this is the best machine to sew those t-shirts well guys, it's not a rock. It seems that it's a genuine machine inside and I will show you everything else in another video. 
So guys, that was all for today. Let me know which of the hems you like the most. I like the first one the most, but I have to admit that the second one is the easier if you do just one top stitch. If you find this video useful, please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment. Bye!